New MacBook Pros are out, and I figured this would be a good time to do volume two of my must-have Mac apps. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably noticed that I've been using my Mac Mini a lot more than just as a typical file server. I had some issues editing video and LumaFusion on the iPad, so I've been using Final Cut a bit more. With that means I'm using the Mac Mini just a little bit more. Don't worry, I'm still using the iPad. Uh, but I've been playing around with some more Mac apps lately, and I figured this would be a good time to cover these Mac apps. PopClip is a utility that brings the text selection menu from iOS to the Mac, but it like, turns it up to 11. It's really cool and powerful. You can do all the things like cut, copy, and paste. That's all there. But there's also options that you can add like search and paste and match style. Paste and match style is one of my favorites because I can never remember the keyboard shortcut for it. This is one of those things that's really handy if you copy rich text, but you want it to match, you know, uh, the body of a new email or something like that. PopClip's real power, though, comes from installing extensions. So I've got extensions installed for Things, Drafts, Fantastical, and Deliveries. You can get these by going into the menu bar app and hitting the plus button. When I select text, I have the option to send text to those apps. So for example, for Drafts, that will make a note. For things in Fantastic Hell, that will make either a new task or calendar event. And for deliveries, that will add tracking information to that app. This is incredibly powerful for connecting third-party apps together on the Mac. There are a ton of extensions to check out on PopClip's website. I'm gonna link that and everything else I mentioned in the description below so you can go check it out and see if PopClip is something that's gonna work for you. AirBuddy is a utility for connecting AirPods to your Mac easily. Now, AirPods easily and seamlessly connect to the iPhone and iPad, no problem. But I was really surprised to see they don't connect to the Mac the same way. This is where AirBuddy comes in and kind of bridges that gap. If you take your AirPods out of the case near it, you get a menu. You can click on this menu and that will connect the AirPods to your Mac. You can also set up favorite devices in the menu bar. So when you click on that icon, it'll just quickly connect. AirBuddy even ships with a battery widget that will show the power states of all your connected devices, not just AirPods. That's really handy and kind of weird Apple didn't make one of those. Better Snap Tool brings the only good Windows feature to the Mac. That is snapping Windows management. There is a ton of customization you can do with Better Snap Tool, but I run it pretty default. So how I use this is I can drag an app to the side and get a 50% view and then drag another app to the other side and get a 50% view. So I'm recreating the iPad multitasking that I'm used to. But you can also do things like dragging it to the top to get full screen or dragging it to the corner to get a 25% window view. This is a really cool utility, especially if you're like me and are used to the iPad multitasking and like the iPad multitasking because it doesn't have a bunch of different windows behind each other. It's just much more focused. So if you're used to that kind of thing, I highly recommend Better Snap Tool. One thing that throws me off about using the Mac is you have to eject external drives and SD cards. Since I've been working on the iPad for years now, and since they've added external storage support, you don't have to eject drives at all or SD cards or anything. You can just pull them out. It's really nice, but on the Mac, you definitely have to eject them. I may have broken an SD card because I wasn't injecting them, but that is where this next app comes in, and that is Eject Bar. Eject Bar is a handy utility that allows you to eject drives, cards, whatever. Just click on it and then pick the drive you want to eject. You can also set it up so that you can right click on it and then it just ejects everything. This is terrific for laptop users when you just have like a cable plugged into your laptop and you have like a bunch of drives and stuff plugged into a hub. You could just eject everything, unplug the cable and out you go. Timery is an app I've talked about a lot in the context of the iPhone and iPad, but it is now on the Mac. Timery, for those that don't know, is a time tracking app that hooks into Toggle. You can set it up to track projects so you can easily build clients or see how much time you're spending on something. What sets Timery's Mac app apart is its awesome menu bar feature. You can set it up so that it shows the current project that you're tracking and the time that you've been working on that. There's also a ton of other settings so you can customize how this works to the way you want it. Timery also recently added a reports page so you can see how you've been spending your time more clearly. And this isn't just limited to the Mac, it's on all the great platforms. 
When I'm typically using my Mac mini, I'm jumping between plugging it into a monitor, but most of the time I'm actually remote controlling it from my iPad. But because of this, I change the aspect ratio and the resolution a lot. When I'm on my monitor, I like to have it in a 1440p mode at a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but my iPad here, that is a four by three aspect ratio. So I wanna obviously take up the appropriate screen size. So I've been using these guys right here. It's just like a dummy HDMI thing that mimics a 4K monitor. And then I've been using an app called Display Menu. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to quickly change the aspect ratio and the resolution right from the menu bar. So no matter which way I'm using my Mac mini, uh, whether it's plugged into a monitor or I'm remote controlling it, I can quickly change the aspect ratio and the resolution to be appropriate for that device. What's cool about display menu is you can option click on a setting and that will set it as a favorite. So that way, if you're like me, you want to use it in 1440 mode on a 16 by nine aspect ratio when plugged into a monitor and then a four by three aspect ratio when you're using it remote controlled from an iPad, you can set those favorites at the top by option clicking on them and then you could just jump between those. If you're somebody that needs to jump between a bunch of different aspect ratios or resolutions or whatever, display menu is a must have. So these last two Mac apps I talked about in the first Mac apps video I did, uh, but some stuff has changed and I think they are super relevant for some of the settings that they have now that I didn't talk about in the other video. So I just wanna briefly mention them again. First is Alfred, and Alfred is probably my favorite Mac app. If somebody came to me and said, hey, we will give you any Mac app that you can just transplant into uh, the iPad, well, I'd probably pick Final Cut, but the second one would definitely be Alfred. It does things like clipboard manager, text snippets, system commands, and this is all on top of local and web searches. It's really just a spotlight replacement. You can also build and install custom workflows. So a couple I've been using are things and drafts, the ability to create new tasks and things and the ability to search and create drafts. Now I didn't make these workflows, but I will link to where you can get them in the description below. But the killer new workflow is the ability to run shortcuts right from Alfred. I can trigger Alfred, type SC, and then type the name of the shortcut and run it. This is so incredibly powerful for shortcuts and Alfred users. It's seamless, it works so well. Then the last app I wanna mention is Bartender. Bartender is a must have for Mac users because it cleans up all those menu bar items. And then if you have stuff like the Adobe Creative Suite and stuff that just has those menu bar items that you can't ever get rid of, you can hide those so that way you never have to see them. But what's really cool about Bartender, especially if you have one of those MacBook Pros with a notch now, is there is a setting in there called use Bartender Bar to show hidden items. What this does is it puts everything that you've put in Bartender and it drops it down to a second menu bar. So that way, if you're having a ton of stuff in that menu bar, maybe something's going over the notch or it's menu bar items are hiding underneath the notch, you can use this to kind of have that drop down and have all those menu bar items still accessible, but on a separate menu bar. Honestly, I've just been using this feature on my Mac mini because I think it looks a lot better than uh, with that feature off. So that's it for this video. That's Must Have Mac Apps Volume 2. If you have a Mac app recommendation, let me know what it is in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.